I don't know how to start this video. What should I say? Where have I been? I'm not gonna overthink it. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna get really comfortable for this one. Where have I been? Well, on December 4th, my husband and I started keto. We just woke up one day and decided we didn't want to be so overweight anymore. Let's try it out. Wing it. So that was going really well. Um, I've been keeping track of everything because I wanted to share it with you guys once I saw if it worked, basically. you know. So I wanted to get like a month ahead and uh, show what I did to uh, drop weight. And it started dropping really fast. I hit about um, 14, 15 pounds and I started going to the gym and the more I went to the gym, the more painful I just felt, um, there was something going on with my stomach. I've had diverticulitis for 10 years. So I thought it was just that acting up, uh, every time I worked out, it would just be excruciating pain. So on December 18th, I went to the doctor. And I said, there's a mass, there's something going on. Like it, it honestly, it felt like a big potato sitting in my stomach, like rock hard. And it was like, something's not right. So she felt around my stomach and she's like, I think it's just muscle and fat. That's fair. <laughs> um, but I insisted that something was wrong and she ordered a sonogram. So it took him over two weeks to get the sonogram of my abdomen to get me scheduled and in for that. And I could tell by the lady's face, as soon as she turned on the thing, she was like, uh, what medical issues do you have? What? And I was like, oh crap, there's definitely something going on. She sees something, um, but she wouldn't let me look. She like, let me see, there we go. Get my glasses on so I can see. Um, she wouldn't let me look. She like turned the monitor so I couldn't see it. Jokingly, I said, what does it look like? There's a grapefruit sitting in my abdomen. And she's like, oh, your doctor will review all the results with you. So I kind of knew I was screwed. So I made notes because I've been keeping a timeline of everything. And I'm going to use them so I don't ramble on. Um, January 5th was the sonogram. Uh, oh, by the way, on January 3rd, there was a major ice storm. And a tree fell on my car. I'll insert some pictures here a branch about the size of my arm went through where you know where your hood opens up and there's that grate right there yeah a branch about the size of my arm went through there it cracked the windshield it made a lot of dents on the car so dealing with that also that was fun but minor um january 7th while i was at the gym the doctor called me uh, which I thought was going to be the results of the sonogram. And she said she wanted me to come into her office at 1.30 the next day for the results. And she would not give me the results over the phone. But at the end of our conversation said, uh, we'll get a game plan going for your care of it. And I said, what is it? I don't know what it is, but you're freaking me out. I want to know what it is. So January 8th, I went into her office and she said, she started the conversation by saying, I am so sorry when you said you had a mass or something hard in your abdomen. I wasn't feeling anything because your entire abdomen and pelvis is a giant mass. So when she was feeling around to see if she could find a mass, she wasn't finding one because she didn't know that the entire area was a mass. Um, so at the time they just called it a pelvic mass. They said that they do not think it's GI gastrointestinal, that they think it's gynecological. She didn't give me dimensions or anything and said we would find out more from the CT scan. This is the point where I decided I should probably tell my mom and dad what's going on. Um, my husband was of course through the process with me of all the appointments to get to that point. Um, but uh, because I'm still not driving because of my eye my left I should I'll do an update on that too but left eye the pressure is a lot better um, I'm regaining a lot of the vision it's still depth perception is still off and it's still probably about 20% not there but so much progress on my eye the right eye pressure has gone way up the left eye has stabilized but I'm not driving so 
with our car getting damaged from the ice storm and me not driving because of my left eye, my mom drove me to the appointment and she was like, mm, I didn't even tell her anything was going on. <laughs> so when she asked, sorry mom. So when she asked what the appointment was for, I was like, oh, I have this thing, I have some kind of mass in my stomach. They're just gonna do some scans. So she was kind of mad that I didn't say anything sooner, but I didn't want to worry, worry. I didn't want to worry anybody until I figured out what it was. Um, but yeah, so she drove me to that appointment and I told her and then she was waiting on the results with me to find out what was going on. And I told my dad. So January 13th, I had, um, January 13th, I had a CT scan. They did one with contrast and one without the contrast. That's the dye. The two big things that you have to drink. And a funny story, I was chugging. It was a grape flavored dye. And I was like, I'm still on keto. Uh, so I'm chugging this dye. It's like this big, mm, I don't know, probably like 32 ounces. You have to slam the first 32 ounces and then you slowly drink the last cup that's the same size, 32 ounces. So I'm like, chug, chug, chug. I'm being funny about it. And I'm chugging this grape flavored it tastes so good it tastes like grape kool-aid and as soon as i was like this just tastes so good it's not like the nasty stuff they used to make you drink i was like oh does this have sugar in it <laughs> like who would have thought i stayed on perfect keto for a month and a half and then i drank something with sugar in it who thought a ct scan so make sure you get the diabetic version of the flavored ct scan because it, it was fine it didn't throw me out of ketosis or anything but that's funny. I didn't even think to ask what was in there to make it taste good. <laughs> um, so they did the CT scan and uh, my veins are crazy. So they had to poke me like eight times. Um, they blew out two veins on my left arm, blew out one on my right, and then finally got it in my hand where I always ask them to start with. My hand always goes. They would get a line, but they couldn't get the sailing in to test the dye. Um, so that was the issue with that. But they finally got it. And her name was Donna. She, they said, but nobody else can get it. Donna can get it. It took Donna three times. So they didn't feel as bad. Got that going. And um, as soon as I got done with my, CC, with my CT scan, the, they started using words like, honey and sweetie and good luck. And I was like, uh oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> and again, I even asked him, I was like, oh, can I peek so I don't have to wait? Like I, I, don't, I don't know how to read a CT scan, but I just wanted so bad to see it. Like I knew by other people's faces what they were seeing on the screen. I knew that there was visibly something there and I wanted to see it and she like, no your doctor will call you with the results. January 14th, my primary care physician, who is the only one that I've seen up to this point, called me and she said, I have the results from your CT um, scan. And the name of what I have, this giant mass, or we found out it's masses, is called a multi-septated cystic mass. That's the actual name of it. So what's the first thing I did? I Googled it. You shouldn't Google it because the first thing it does is take you to the Mayo Clinic and you freak out. So don't Google it. Um, so once she told me exactly what it was, they had the exact sizes. Uh, the one that is stemming off of my right ovary is the size of a soccer ball. I'm not kidding. I, I literally have a mass the size of a soccer ball. I said football and they corrected me and they said, no, it's actually a soccer ball because it's as wide as it is it's tall. Um, so stemming off my right ovary, I have a mass the size of a soccer ball. And the one off my left ovary is larger than a grapefruit. The next step was to get into um, my gyno's office and he's awesome, super experienced with this, but that was step one, get into an emergency appointment because I had called them and scheduled, but it was like three weeks out and they said, absolutely not, that's not acceptable. It needs to be in the next couple days. So my PCP forced him to get me in sooner and she also told me to expect surgery very soon. 
So that's what I walked out. And then I just had to wait until my next appointment. January 18th was that appointment. Met with him and after about five minutes, he said, your surgery is Monday. How in the world did it get this big? Um, I just thought it was gastrointestinal. I thought it was diverticulitis acting up, which is still not an excuse, but uh, I just kept putting it off and putting it off. And it's like, as I started losing decent amounts of weight, it became, it was like sticking out more and it was harder because it wasn't hidden under, I <laughs> mean, it wasn't hidden under as many layers as fat. Don't get me wrong, I still got a long way to go on keto. I'm only about 25 pounds down. We got, my husband's doing it too, he's lost over 30. Uh, we still have a long way on keto left, but the small amount that I did lose, it's like it removed some layers of fat to where you could feel the mass better. Um, and then just working out. It's like, even on the bike, it's like every, time I pedaled it would feel like it was hidden some it would it was just I knew something wasn't right it, it didn't feel right and we should always listen to our bodies I should have went in way before I did but I didn't my doctor said that a large percentage of these uh, multi-septated masses come back benign that's good it means non-cancerous um, the size of it is a little bit alarming um, he just kept going back and forth my age, I'm 41, and so that's good. That, that's like on the benign side. Uh, the size of, it's so big, uh, he was kind of like, so it's a shot. You have to go for a full blood panel, and then uh, there's also a blood test called a CA-125, and that's a cancer antigen to see uh, if there's cancer cells, precancerous cells, because for the surgery, uh, number one, he said he he is insisting on getting it out in one piece. He does not want it to rupture because then if there's cancer cells in there, of course you wouldn't want those in your abdomen and pelvis area. Um, so his number one goal is to get it out in one piece, even if he has to do a way larger incision. Um, and while they have you open, they actually hand it off to the lab, oncologist, ov ovarian uh, cancer doctor, oncologist, they hand it off and immediately while you're still cut open, have it tested. So they'll know before they sew me up if it's malignant or benign. If it's malignant, then they go ahead and go in and um, remove lymph nodes or you know whatever they need to. And if it's benign, they just sew you back up. So I've had all the blood tests. Uh, I should have got the results today. I really wanted to know before surgery, um, but I guess what's the point, right? The office closed at noon and they did not tell me. So surgery is on Monday, today's Friday, and I guess I'm not gonna find out before surgery uh, if I had you know, markers to indicate malignancy. I'm hoping that no news is good news. So I had that done and then today, had to do a COVID test, but the drive through I did the drive through COVID, and when I rolled down the window, she handed it to me. The lady that did it in August in the emergency room was trying to pull my brain out of my nose. Uh, this lady handed it to me, and I was like, <laughs> good, good. Uh, and they said that if I do not hear from them, Everything is good to go for surgery on Monday morning. If I do hear from them, I have COVID. I don't feel like I have COVID. I've been lucky, I've dodged it. Um, my dad actually got COVID. Uh, something else that's been going on. Um, my dad had a bunch of doctor's appointments and we all kind of knew something wasn't right. And he, he does what, it's funny because I, I preached at him about sharing and telling people, Dad, you gotta let people know what's going on. As I'm going through this stuff, not letting people know what's going on. <laughs> so I wonder where I get that. Uh, but on December 4th, um, my dad called me in the morning and he said he was supposed to have a doctor's appointment to find out some results that day. And he called in the morning and said he cannot go to his doctor's appointment because they called him and told him that he tested positive for COVID. 
and he was out there by himself and I just wanted to it was just it just broke my heart that he was sitting out there by himself um, so he found out he had COVID and then about four hours later they called him and told him he has prostate cancer on the same day it was December 4th really sucked um, so I would appreciate any uh, prayers he will be starting radiation soon so any prayers his name is Matt Matthew send lots of love light and prayers his way please I know he'll be okay he's gonna get through this uh, they caught it early and he'll be fine but extra prayers and love sure don't hurt I said no more medical issues our family is all filled up we're good no more no more medical issues I did also find out that um, the the people who check you in the hospital and run through what's going to be done during your procedure told me that my husband is allowed to do the valet come and drop me off at the hospital we can go in together he's allowed to go to the surgical waiting room and wait for me to get out of surgery when the surgery's over the doctor will come to the surgical waiting room and let him know how it went and the results of everything and then he is asked to immediately leave the hospital he's not allowed to come see me while i'm waking up he's not allowed to see me in recovery and he's also not allowed to come into my hospital room at all period they said nobody in illinois right now in central illinois no one is allowed in your hospital room there's a lot of places that you you'll have one visitor one person for the entire duration of your stay um they tightened it up in late november and i wasn't aware of that so that was the added twist of super stress freak out that i wasn't prepared for uh, so no one is allowed when i will wake up from surgery on my own uh, by myself i will be in the hospital uh, they were estimating three or four days uh, but it could be up to five uh, so that whole entire time I'm in there, my husband's not allowed to come to my room to bring me anything, drop off anything, nothing. That's crazy. All right, so surgery is, I have to be there at 6 a.m. on Monday for 7.30 a.m. surgery. The procedure that they're doing is the left laparotomy. Uh, the right, this is a super weird name, the right salon. Oh, no way I'm going to say this. Salopinego. Ophorectomy. Ophorectomy. Salopinego. Ophorectomy. It's the craziest name I've ever heard of. I will put the name of it. It's literally O-O-P-H-O-R-E-C-T-O-M-Y. Ophorectomy. At least it has a fun name. Uh, what that means is that they're going to take... Um, my ovaries and fallopian tubes. Oophorectomy. Oophorectomy. Salopinego oophorectomy. That word oophorectomy is going to be stuck in your head now. Oophorectomy. So that's where I've been. I've had many freakouts. They have me on a sedative to calm me down. <laughs> A pre-surgery anxiety sedative to calm me down but what else can you do you have to um, if there's any situation where let go and let God applies this is definitely one because there's it's not in my control 
I can cry about it. I can be angry about it. I can be sad about it, but it's not in my control. And I have to just, I have to just lay it over, hand it over. I have to just lay it down, hand it over and know that um, it'll be okay, no matter what. Let go, let God. So here it is, I'm putting it out there. It's Friday night, I'll probably post this tomorrow, Saturday. And then I will be going into surgery on Monday morning. We're not gonna cry. We're not gonna lose our sense of humor. I'm just gonna laugh and pray this away. I miss you guys. Sorry for not posting for so long. Bye. I couldn't go away without showing you Briggs. Look at this. I had to lock him out of my bedroom so I could hear to talk. Look. Briggs. Briggs. He's mad.